What is up, ladies and gents? It's your boy Brian back at Bidwell Canyon Farm. Today I'm down in the trenches. Behind me here is a 300 foot long trench that's been dug to about three foot six to four foot deep in certain areas. We have a polyethylene pipe, one inch in diameter. It is a potable water NSF certified 160 PSI pipe. It sits in about six inches of sand, two inches below and four inches above and it runs the entire length of this trench. I used to wrestle with poly. I used to put like dish soap and rubber mallets and it it was just brutal and it never really came out that great. So I'm going to show you the ultimate trick when it comes to poly pipe. What you'll need propane torch or map gas. I use just a 5 16th bit in the impact driver to tighten up the heavy duty stainless steel pipe clamps. You're going to want two of those per barbed fitting, which is XL, extra long barb fitting. I don't know if that's any better than the short ones. That's just the ones we bought. They're stainless stainless street 90 going into our hydrant i have pre-taped the entire shaft up to a little above the three foot berry since we're so deep here and you'll need a pull banger a t-post and some larger pipe clamps to hold the hydrant to the t-post once you get it pounded in all right so let's do it my neck is as stiff as a board right now will be our base and our structure for the hydrant to pipe clamp onto. I'll show you a little trick of the trade here. I'm using an old piece of ABS. I'm going to suspend this hydrant using a gear tie. Just any pipe clamp or tie will do. This will allow the bottom to be able to rotate in and out so I can get the polyethylene pipe and keep the hydrant near where it is going to end up on the T-post there. So the rubberized part of this is able to keep this up off the ground and then the bottom can rotate in and out. So when I heat up my polyethylene, I can bump this out and then slide it on quick as I can. So that kind of takes some pressure off. We're going to install the pipe clamps opposite each other. So one screw head on the left, one screw head on the right, like this. Then we're gonna heat this polyethylene pipe with a torch and we are going to slide that barbed fitting right onto there. And I'll also be putting in some rebar stakes or concrete stakes laterally. So when you're pulling the handle, it takes a lot of the pressure right up here before it even gets down to the base. So there's a fine line when it comes to heating this poly pipe. You wanna be enough heat to get it malleable, but not enough to melt it. Make sure there's no dirt in your torch there. Be sure to have your clamps on first. There's no going back. You'll have to cut it and redo everything. So what I like to do is kind of start warming all the way up a little even past where the fitting's gonna go and as that warms up try to evenly heat everything you'll start to see the pipe sweat just a touch it becomes a little bit glassy that's when you know you're getting close you might even see some deformation which is okay as long as you didn't overdo it. So try to get that just to the point of a little bit of sweat showing on the poly. And once you get a little sweat, there's a little showing. You might see that in the camera, you might not. Then we're going to install it here. And you want to be quick with your pipe clamps as well because when it's nice and malleable, it's perfect to tighten those up onto the fitting. So I think we're pretty much good to go. Let's do it. So we have our fitting and we have a nice soft, oop, almost. The end kind of lipped over on me, but that's okay. 
these are going to tighten right into that really nicely. Go ahead and put the tighten up on those. Alright. Oh. Hopefully you got to see all that. And you'll notice the way we cut the poly and everything, it fits perfectly into our T-post. So you see here when I was putting that barb fitting on, it kind of whipped that over, but it's okay. It just sucks when your work doesn't come out perfect. But these sat in there and I could tell it was nice and warm. So when that tightened up, it just pulled around those barbs super evenly and tightly. So let's pipe clamp this hydrant here and down at the base and then we'll pressure test the system, make sure there's no leaks. Oh brother, it looks like we've got quite a leak going. Nah, just kidding. That's an irrigation ditch. We have a new horse named Harley and a new donkey named Snooks. But these guys are super cool. More about them in another video. This is the first hydrant in the lineup and we are gonna pressure test everything right now. So here we are at the top of the system. Now what I did originally when I installed this hydrant, I much prefer the Woodford, Iowa over the Merrill. I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, originally installing this, I put a T with a cap down below to kind of future-proof it for myself in case we ever wanted to add anything to the system, which we did just the other day. So let me show you what that all looks like. Okay, so this is the beginning of the line, and I'm gonna turn this on and make sure nothing is leaking. This is also the, the start of the poly, so this is a 300 footer that goes down the hill and another 300 foot. So we have 600 feet of poly line. Let's turn this on. All right, water is flowing. Let's go check for leaks. All right, we made it back down the hill. Let's see what we've got. So we're looking for any leaks or wet areas on any of these fittings. I do not see any, which is awesome. It means we've done a stellar job. Any leaky stuff under here? Let's take a look. Nope. All right, now we can test the hydrant to see if water is actually flowing down here. Holy, yes it is. Now we do have the added pressure of that hill, which is immense. Oh, look at the drain plug working swimmingly. Isn't that awesome? So the cool thing about these, there's a plunger in the bottom. And if you're not familiar with these, I did a video quite a while ago about installing a yard hydrant and it's actually our best performing video. It's got over 25,000 views. I'll put a link right here or over here. I don't, I never know where to put it, but it's gonna be somewhere around here. I explained the whole inner workings, it's pretty cool. But that's a lot of pressure. You wanna see that again? I do. Jesus! Lordy, that is extreme. I wonder what the end of the line is gonna look like. Let's go check that one out too. I've been working on the water line all the live long day. I've been working on the water line just to pass the time away. Can't you hear the whistle blowing? Rise up so early in the morn. What a beautiful evening. The sun is just going down. Got the sun rays beaming into the beautiful clouds. Oh man, what a gorgeous day. All right, let's check for leaks. Let's fire this thing up. Everyone stand back. Baby, she's a whistler. Here she comes. Oh, good. Whoa. Oh, baby. She's spitting. She's a spitting. Look at that. Man, that is perfect. Beautiful. Little drainy drain. Blew the hillside in on me. This was a really tough trench to dig because of this factor right here that's just sand and gravel super loose loosey goosey I'm hoping that stops at some point you gonna stop? are you stopping anytime soon? or do we have an issue with the hydrant? hmm 
I mean, it might have an issue. It is slowing. Come on, baby. If this doesn't stop, it means our plunger is either damaged or not doing its thing. There we go. Whew. All right, that kind of worried me for a second. Well, let me tell you what I don't like about this. I promised you I would. So this hardware right here, when you open the fitting and close, you see how it bends out right here? It's not you got to hold it together to get it to operate right. And I, this is definitely a flaw in the design. So Merrill, whatever you did here, you got to fix it. I, I considered taking this back, but I'm so far away. It's like two and a half hours to take it back, two and a half hours back. I don't want to waste my time. I'm going to make a fitting or some spacer that goes between here and drill and machine screw this to like a nylock washer to hold that together so that doesn't happen. But that is a bad design. Otherwise, I like it. It's super easy to operate and everything, but I just don't like how that flares out and then it binds up and you have to keep these together. I thought it was badass when I first saw it. I was like, oh, I'll try that. But I mean, I haven't even, that was the first time I ever used it. And it already, this is showing signs that it's not ideal. It's got these wear marks from when it pops off of there and how it rubs. I mean, that's, that's not cool, guys. You got to dial in your scene, man. All right, it's dinner time. I'm gonna call it a day. I hope this helped you in some way. If it did, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Get on board with BCF. It's the way to be. It's the realest channel on YouTube. You know it's true. I'll catch you on the next one. Shakito! Look at that mess. Oh, my, my, my. All right, let's get home. Let's oh, Tomorrow we're gonna backfill. I'm too wiped out to do it.